All right. So yeah, we're looking at 11.1 MVC controller. And I, like I was saying, we were looking at this uh, over uh, the last time we looked at it right before spring break. When we updated the version to do uh, textures, it just doesn't work. And if you disable that and say output texture zero or not put the attribute about out outputting texture because the output texture is not the default, um, it works fine. But I did want to show you what the bug that I was encountering was. So let me actually put it back to the way we had it. And uh, I'll show you what the bug that I'm encountering is. So this is the movie player GL file. So that's an external. So it, you load it. If you're going to edit it, you can look at it by double clicking here. But I would not edit this. This is just the view of this instantiation of it. And it has the actual patcher arguments already filled in, that's not the file you want to edit. You want to, fi you want to edit the original file. So you want to pull it up from your open or your open recent. So look in your open recent and see if you can't find movie player GL. All right. So yours probably was the way it was originally, which is at output texture one here. You should have, oh, we may have been trying to monkey around with the universe. Make sure that, that your universe here says uh, G GL video plane and then the universe name is GL. Okay, so make sure you're doing that. Uh, okay, and so I had at output texture one, and if I save this, close it, What do you need to see? Oh, was those were those new? Tran enable at blend enable one at transform reset two and at blend alpha blend. I had everything except for blend alpha. Uh, that's not really going to matter anyway because we're going to change that. But um, yeah, so this now if now that that's saved when I close the patch. I save it, I reopen it, and uh, turn it on, choose a movie, bring up the fader, it just doesn't work. But if I now open the movie player GL file in the background, Boom, it springs to life. And I can even close this. And, oh, no, no, I guess I can't close it. But as soon as I open this in the background, it makes my whole patch work fine and work the way it should be. So I haven't figured out that's a weird bug. Because... If this loaded in the background shouldn't change anything in this patch because this is this is just the same instantiate wait this uh, file here is the same file that we've but as we've loaded here just without any of the patcher arguments instantiated and for whatever reason having this around makes all the other instantiations actually work. So I'll keep trying to look into that on why that is, because that's a weird issue. But uh, for now, let's just get rid of the texture thing, and we'll fix it by saying output texture zero. Um, but I did want to show you that that's the way it should work. Is And right now, by default, this is on opacity blending, not additive blending. So... That one is with opacity blending, then your layer order becomes important. Whichever one has full opacity and is on the highest layer ends up being on top, which is the B ball right now. If I lower the opacity of B ball to half, then I can see in, through it. If I to the blading underneath, if I lower the opacity of blading to half, then I can see through that one to the to the countdown, which is the next layer underneath that. And if I 
lower the opacity of that, then I get the last layer, which here I'll put a different like garbage, and you can see that. But in order to see this last layer, every other layer above it has to be transparent partially. Right? So we're gonna we're going to add to this um, controller here the ability to change what layer you're on so, uh, to make opacity blending actually useful. All right, so first of all, let's fix the uh, fix that movie player so that we don't have to just have this rely on having this running in the background to fix whatever bug. Uh, so open up, uh, whoops, not that. We want to open the original, like I said, so Go to your open recent and open up movie player GL. And for now, let's just, we can fix this simply by say, changing the output texture one to output texture zero so that it doesn't output a texture. If you were on max six, I don't think you can output a texture anyway. Uh, so that would make yours work <laughs> in the first place. Uh, but it shouldn't, other than, other than being a little bit less uh, processor efficient, there really isn't any difference between the two what we're doing. All right, so save this. You just go ahead and save Movie Player GL. Then it should make everything that you had running go black because now all the movie players have lost their uh, programming. Uh, and now come back over here. Let's save as on this 11.1 .1 MVC controller. Save as. And let's call this 13.1 MVC controller. All right. First thing, I added some stuff down here. You guys, I don't think you guys did. Let's add that. So change your window to... Call, make sure you name your window to the same name as your universe name, GL. Window GL at floating one at FS menu bar zero. FS menu bar zero, what that will do is get rid of the file menu bar when you go full screen on this window. Floating one means it's always on top of our patcher, so I can move this thing around but still see it. Uh, yeah, so actually we, we should add that uh, escape full screen functionality. We could patch it or we could just steal it from the help file. Right, uh, option click on the thing and grab this little code right here. And let's just steal it from the help file to save time. Paste that in. And now you should be able to go full screen by hitting escape. All right, so now let's make sure that your videos are still, uh, will actually play. Oh, Jesus, don't tell me they don't now. Oh, there we go. I think that's because I still had that thing open in the background. I'm going to save, I'm going to close, I want to verify that this is actually fully working without anything running in the background. All right, I don't have anything running. Let me open it again. Turn on the patch. Set a movie. Yeah, and that's working. Okay, is that working for everybody? All right. <laughs> Whose isn't working? Everybody's probably, huh? All right, let's take a minute and do some diagnosis. Can you bring up the um, other patches? So what's not working? What just doesn't play? 
you, you didn't have your thing on. So now load the movie again. Load the movie. Okay, uh, wait, what's going on? Clear your messages. Close your, uh, save your patch, close it, reopen it. What? No. Make sure you're on max. Save. Close this. Make sure nothing else is open. Open up 13.1 MVC controller. Okay, start up the Q-Metro down there. Load a movie in the thing. And load that up. All right, so you got a problem. So open up your, oh, you're not using this right movie player. Uh, don't, you should have a movie, do you have a movie player GL? So were you not here when we had that class? Uh, so you don't have it? Oh, try to look for it. Is there any movie player GL in there? I'll have to come back to you. All right, who else is working? All right, let's take a look at your, so that's your movie player GL? Yep. Yeah. So, movie thing's coming in. Oh, I did do something. I uh, I was trying to change. I don't think it's going to matter, uh, but I did send the bangs for the movies through the route. So why don't you guys do this uh, here on the route here, where it says uh, the after. So it should say route hash one molt hash one file name hash one rate hash one layer hash one blend hash one volume and then bang, uh, then you take the la the second to last output, which is bang, and pass that directly into the jit.movie player. Uh, then it will send, and then you can send bangs to this UDP uh, send right here, and then it will send bangs to that video player. But I think what we had before, we had the send movie bangs, receive movie bangs, I think this will work just as well. I, I um I was just trying I thought maybe that was the source of the bug, so I had changed that. You can leave that. If, if you have movie bangs and it's still working and, and it works, then just leave it. If it doesn't work, then let me know. Try doing that routing. Okay. So yours isn't working. Yeah. Go into your movie player again. And do you have that output texture zero? Yes. You don't have it attached to anything though, so that would ruin it. You don't have your movie player attached to your to your um, video player, so it's not going to get into video. Um, is your uh, who else is isn't working? Who else needs me to look at it? Okay. So oh, you're in that Uh Hey, okay. yeah, it works now. Great. So you need to have call your you're a bit behind. Uh, your render should have a universe name of GL. Go down to GL render. Like that. The name, yeah. Now your window needs to have the same universe name. Oh, oh, that main patch. That's where you work. Over there. Window. It needs to be GL. You can say at uh, loading one. FS menu bar. It's easiest just to pick it out. Pick it in one or zero, sorry. There we go. And uh, great. Now let's try your. Oh, your movie. You, your movie players are not instantiated as. You have them instantiated as a message. So try to fix that. It's not a message. You're putting another message. Object, you use an end as your shortcut. There we go. Now start now movie player. Yeah, does it exist? We'll find out. Yes, it does. Great. So you need to replace all of those with actual movie players. Alright. Uh, who else is, needs to alright, what do you got going on? Alright, so you have something called 2017 movie player GL. Does that Exist? Yes. 
Okay, great. Let's, uh, oh, turn on your Metro. And go ahead and load a movie. And bring up the thing. Change the rate to one just for the hell of it, although it shouldn't matter. Okay, so definitely not working. Let's go open up your movie player GL. Oh, also clear your, what's going on over there? Before you clear it, let's see what it says. Oh, text already in use. Okay, that's probably from an old thing. Let's, let's take a look at your movie player GL and get rid of some of that stuff. That was when I was trying to get the texture to work and you're having that bug. And we're not even using that anymore. All right, so get rid of at texture name hash one text. And video playing GL, that's right. Blend one, transform two, three, six. Texture name, get rid of the at texture name text. Uh, just all of the at texture name, yeah, there you go. I know I hate how it makes you resize it every time you change it. All right, save this. Oh wait, hold on, um, movie bangs, that should work. Um, oh, you already did it, you already did the thing. Yeah, go ahead and delete your movie bangs. Save this. All right, close it. Now, um, oh, uh, now make a UDT send. UDT send. Uh, local host. Uh, oh, actually, I don't think you need local host on Windows. 127.0.0.0. .0 .0. Uh, whoops, and then you got to put a port, and the port is uh, whatever you did over here, a five one, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now uh, send the bank, one of the your where you're sending the movie banks. Yeah, send it to that coming out of this trigger. To tr trigger B erase B, the B coming the movie bank. Send it to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Cool. Now try loading a movie again. And try bringing up the, uh, try bringing up the, the that, yeah. Well, crap. What's going on? All right. Uh, go into your movie, open up that movie player again. Yep. Uh, oh, you're, oh, you got to attach the one to the other. That's what we forgot. Uh, so mm -hmm. this attached to that. I think when we originally patched it and we were using named textures, you shouldn't have to actually attach them, but that wasn't working and we went back to matrix space and they have to, you have to actually send them to the matrix from one to the other. All right, so. All right. That's still not working. Okay, uh, let's go back to your previous movie things. Um, version. So open up the movie player one more time. And just do a receive movie bangs. How do you spell it? I think did you just spell it with a capital. Oh, well then, yeah, whatever you want to do it then. And catch that in the movie. Save this. Close. And then make the corresponding send and attach it to that thing. Turn off your metro and back on again. And try to move this. Close it. Close, um, make sure everything's saved and close and reopen. I'll be right back. Okay, who else is, isn't working? Did yours start working now that you are loading that? Okay, I'll come back. Uh, Alright, so. What have we found out on yours? Did you find Movie Player GL, or did you just make it? Okay, okay great. Uh, and it's the same as over here. Uh, you gotta atta attach the movie to the video plane. Yeah, like that. And now save that. That was it. And, uh, 
go back into your movie player, GL. So let's see how you're doing your banks. Okay. Oh, you are still receiving movie banks. Okay, good. That's fine. Close, delete that. Yeah. Oh, good. You're getting it. Close that. Don't save. You're fine. You didn't change anything. All right. Uh, go ahead and load a movie. There we go. And now, uh, scroll, uh, yeah, load another one. And uh, bring the, there we go. Okay, great. Yours is working. Yours is working. Yours working, Josh? Mine's gross. <laughs> Was it working? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. But then I broke it. Oh, um, but that's it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're down to, is yours working? Oh, well, you, the metro's off. Is the metro on? All right. Now load it. Wait a second. That, that's not. The, all right. Well, that, you don't have a, where's your render? Is this a different patch? Let me see. This is a uh, So you don't have any, I don't see, where's your, where's your render and stuff? You have a movie going to a, window, which is something we did before, uh, earlier, but then we added to it and we had the whole rendering system that we don't have. In this. Do you have a later version? Yeah. Okay, let's see your other version. No, that's okay. That's, wait, that's that's the better version. Okay, so try this one instead of the other one because that this is newer. Did you make any changes in this that you yeah, I have to make a change. Uh -huh. So this is the one that you're gonna want, but this is missing some stuff too. Um, what did you add to this? Is there can you take the stuff that you added and move it back over to the other thing? Yeah. Alright. So you're gonna want to make sure not to have two versions open because they can conflict with each other and make Unlock your package the other thing. Now make your uh, GL render. You have to add the word uh, GL after that. And uh, you should probably say add a race color. Add a race color. Move your X movie bank so that you can see what's going on there. Go. At E race color. Zero, period, zero, period, zero, period, one, period. That's making a black erase color. Great. And uh, change your key metro from 300 hertz to 30 hertz. There you go. Turn on that. All right. Make sure your other version is closed at this point. And save as on this 13.1 so that we know which one's which. This looks completely different than five seconds ago. So what did you do? Uh, 
Still not working. Open up your 11.1 movie player file. Is this 11.1 movie player file in the same directory as your MVC controller? Mm -hmm. There you go. Got to be in the same directory. Who else is isn't working still? Oh, so it could be any number of things on yours. Let's see. If there, is there any error messages that you have? Because yours is max six, so I'm, I'm thinking about the error. So I'm yeah, right. Okay. Right. Just the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you have a video. Get rid of that video plane that's probably sitting on top of everything. That shouldn't be there. Who has that and close that patch? That should not be open. Oh, uh, you had two different JIT windows in here? Yeah, I just okay. So save this. Now go back into your movie player and actually save it. Uh, so is this the patch or is this uh, just the view of the patch? Okay, great. So uh, save that. Okay. And uh, wait, you aren't receiving any. So this isn't going to make any video because it doesn't, it's not getting any bang. Oh, you did get the thing from the route. All right. Well, you just need, you'll need to send it in the other um, version. For now, just do a, add a receive movie bang on this. I think that be easier. Uh, make sure, I think you capitalize the M and the B. See, make it a receive And uh, patch that into the JIT PC movie. Oh, um, for now, get rid of this JIT GL texture. Just uh, take the movie and put it, no, get rid of it. Send the, the output of the movie directly into your video plane. Video plane. The one at the very bottom. Yeah. There you go. All right, now save this. So the the movie. everything, reopen your patch, and see if there's any error. Right. Command M. Oh, no. All right, go ahead. Try turning on the key metro. Down the bottom. There you go. Try loading the movie. Command M now. Is there any new messages? No. Uh, go into your good movie player. That's the only thing you got. I don't know what's going on here. In your, in your movie player GL file. And, uh, um, for now, let's try, try, uh, Send this output, which doesn't really go to anything. Take the, uh, take the, we're going to patch this into that output. Yeah, like that. And delete the other connection. Save that. All right, now close 
and uh, yeah, go to movie. Put a key window down here. Let's start with a button. Put a button down below there, and see if there's anything coming out of this yeah, movie player. Yeah, output setting out. Definitely sending something. It's just not getting. All right, so make a jit.p window. P window. P window. All one word. No dot. P window. P window. There you go. Now attach not from the button, not from the button, from that directly to the so uh, load, a, load a movie again. All right, so not sure. All right, here's the working still. Uh, does anybody else still have problems? I'd like to move on from this. Uh, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this on the website, and whoever's isn't working should just download my version so we can move on. For Mac 6, I think that's still not going to work. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, if it doesn't work, get Mac 7. That's all I can tell you. Uh, yeah. All right. So let me save this. Uh, you're going to need that. Why is that? I'm in the wrong directory. That's why. Where the heck did I save this for crying out loud? Yeah. Uh, For the love of Pete, whatever, I'll save a new version. Movie Player GL. File Save As. Should have been there. I don't know why I couldn't see it. Jitter Class 2017, that's why. Okay, here it is. Movie Player GL. There it is. All right, Movie Player Geo. All right, so download those from the website. What? Did that not get saved? No, they're there. They're there. Okay. Are, all right, so tell me when we're ready to move on. So you should use, if you're downloading the one from the website, you want to use the same movie player GL. Oh, your movie vowels. I guess, yeah, I guess let me put movie vowels up there too because that might be your problem. You might have a bad movie vowels. File. Uh, 
What did what was I using? Mine's called MovieValves.MaxPack. Yeah, okay. So I'll send you my movie vows as well. There. All right. So that's there now. Movie player GL, movie vows, and 13.1 MVC controller. When you open it, make sure you don't have any of your previous versions open and screwing things up. Also, make sure that you save all of the files in the same place. Your movie vows, your movie player GL, and your MVC controller need to be in the same directory for it to work. Okay, so what I wanted to show, what we were supposed to have at this point, is that we have a functioning uh, opacity blend, uh, opacity mixer. But we need to add the we add, need to add layer control and. Also, we want to be able to change to other blending styles other than just opacity. Does anybody already have it downloaded, but it doesn't work? Is anybody still downloading it? The stuff from the website. So you downloaded it, Josh, but it doesn't work on yours? I don't know what else to do. I, I give you a file that works. <laughs> it doesn't work on your computer. Did you download the, the, all the stuff from, are you, are you using any of your own files or are you, are you using all of my files? Okay. Yeah, if you're going to use the one from the website, make sure you're using all of my files and not any of your own. All right, and yours, Dylan? Is it working? Great. And so, Shay, what's up? I, I just making sure that the only thing that's open is. So it still doesn't work? Is that what you're saying? I haven't tried it yet. Oh. Try it right now. Right, yeah, we deprecated that. I just went back to the send version. I was That was something I was trying to. I thought maybe that was the bug. Mm -hmm. Thought maybe that send wasn't working, that they weren't getting bangs correctly. So I thought, oh, let's start try it, sending it a different way. All right. So are you working? Good. Great. All right. Cool. We're ready to move on. <sighs> okay. So yes, we can opacity mix, but we can't change our layer order yet. So we need to make a new. Uh, we need to add some functionality to the movie vowels uh, patch. So open up the movie vowels patch. That's the B patcher. And then if you're using mine from the internet, make sure this is the one you just downloaded. And uh, go into it. I don't know how that rate got up there. All right, so we need to add some stuff to this. Let me take a look at my notes real quick. Forgot my iPad today, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. We want to do, we want to add a layer and a blending. Okay, great. So, first of all, I found this rate is not very useful. We, we are like putting one on the rate all the time. And I figure, well, let's make it, whoops, let's make it have a rate of one just to start off with. So, uh, move, and move your rate stuff over. So I'm going to just grab the rate and the message attached to the rate and move it over here out of the way. I can move the label next to it. But what I want to do is have a load mess object. It's just like a load bang, but instead of giving you a bang on load, it'll give you a message. 
and let's say one period, load mess one period, and that's gonna send a one when the patch is loaded. And patch that into the float for this rate, so that by default, when it first turns on, it populates the rate as one, and then it's up to you to make it a different rate um, if you want. Uh, so that's the first thing. Then we want to add blending. What? Oh, we're just we're celebrating this. Oh, yeah. And uh, let's, uh, yeah. And uh, when you want to make blending, so let's duplicate the tag that says rate and change the title on it to blend. Okay. And duplicate it again and make one that says layer. Okay. Now we're going to use these same, see the way we formatted the messages here? Right? We have a hash one. What happens to the hash one? It changes depending on the thing that you call, whatever it's called. That you patcher change. arguments. Patcher yeah. Arguments. Patcher arguments. So that gets replaced with your patcher argument. Then, uh, so then we have the underscore rate. So the patcher argument underscore rate, that's what we're using to route this message to the right place on the other end. Then we have a wildcard dollar sign one. We're gonna use and we and you can see we use the same format over here for the mult, which is the multiplication for this uh, slider for the opacity or whatever we're doing. And we have hash one underscore file name for which file you choose. So we want to do the same thing with blend and layer. So duplicate this message that says rate and change the word rate to blend and duplicate that and change the word blend to layer. Okay, we're gonna need new, uh, let's make an integer box, integer number box, the shortcut is I. Go into the inspector for that. And uh, this is, we're gonna make an, uh, for integers, we're gonna use, I'm sorry, for layers, we're gonna use integers. Uh, because there is no such thing as a half layer, right? S but we also don't want to accidentally scroll past um, any meaning, right? So the minimum layer is going to be zero. There's no negative layers. And the maximum layer is there's 99 possible layers in OpenGL. If you can't do your blending in, more, in less than 99 layers, <laughs> there's something wrong. Maybe like a sub-layer, like 99 <laughs> You could put it in a different universe, and then you could you could <laughs> then composite those two universes with compositing layers. compositing shaders. <laughs> All right, so we have wait. I attached that to blend. I'm wrong. Sorry. Attach that to layer, not blend. There we go. Let's get this blend message out of the way. All right, so I got that to layer. Then I'm going to send that out the UDP send localhost. Um, okay, maybe I hope localhost works with Windows. If it doesn't work at all, maybe you have to change this word localhost to 127.001. Great, good. Well, then don't mess with it. <laughs> all right, uh, we need to add this to presentation view, this integer box. That's shift command P or shift control P if you're on Windows, I think. Uh, it puts a pink box around it. And we're going to need to add a one of these for blend, uh, which is that's a U menu. U menu. Uh, I was hoping there was an automatic collection in here. If you go into the inspector, you can click auto populate, uh, auto populate, and then under collection names, they have a whole bunch of different things like shaders and stuff. And I thought maybe they have one for blend modes, but they don't. So we just have to build it manually. So you, you can leave auto populate or you can turn it off. It doesn't matter. We're going to specify the menu items manually. And uh, this is the... What? You go to, in the inspector, under items, menu items, click on edit. And add these. Uh, Add, comma, multiply, comma, screen, comma, exclusion, comma, alpha blend, comma, color add, comma, alpha add. Here, I'll put it in the actual thing, and I will let you 
fill that in. Hold on, you'll get it back. Calm down. There you go. Like that, with separated by commas and a space. Comma, space, and then the next item. Are we done yet? I know, it so looks weird. So many so many A's. Can I buy a vowel? <laughs> Alright. So then doing that now gives you a big old list with all those items in it. We're gonna add this to presentation. Shift Command P. And uh, now take the middle outlet of this, which is menu item of text evaluated as a message, and attach that to that blend message and send the blend out the UDP sent. Make sure you're doing the middle outlet of this, otherwise you're only sending a number and not an actual message. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's see. Let's uh, arrange this stuff. So go into presentation mode, and we got to move some things around. So layer is the integer. Let's put layer and rate underneath each other. I'm going to actually change the uh, text justification on this from center to left, left justified. And you can make the box smaller by doing a command J and it will automatically resize it to the size. Um, here, I'll turn on my keystrokes for you guys. Uh, so layer and then put the integer box right next to it like that. I'm gonna make this panel bigger. This was the rate. I'm gonna put it down at the bottom. Actually, no, I'm gonna put it right after the rate uh, layer because the blend is going to take up the full line. So I'm going to do this. These two boxes are the same size. One's a float, one's a integer. The float is for the rate and the integer is for the layer. Oh, I'm going to change the text justification on rate also to be left justified instead of center. See, I'll line that up with the slider. And then I'll have a blend here. I'll want to change that one to left justified. Command J. Blend, and then probably going to want the full width on this because some of those items are pretty long like alpha blend and color blend. All right, now I can resize this. All right, oh, as long as we are automatically choosing things, let's also just automatically choose a video in the, the thing. Or we can actually, we can have it automatically at least Actually, we won't automatically choose a video, but we will automatically have it start with the fader up. Take the output of this load mess one and send it also into this fader. That way, when it's loaded, the faders all start up. Okay, so now save this. All right, go back to your movie vowels and choose another movie in uh, put some different video make it so that there's different videos in each uh, in each thing and you'll notice that one of them is, when they're all up whichever one you see that's gonna be the one with the highest layer that's because they all have layer zero when it's when it's when they all have the same layer it's a crapshoot as to who's on top 
but we can change that. If I wanted B ball to be on top, I could say now this is layer four and this is layer three, two, and one. If I wanted blading to be on top of B ball, I could change its layer from three to five and now it's on top of layer four so we see it, right? If I make this layer slightly transparent, remember we're doing alpha blending. Oh, you're not seeing the actual blend alpha blend. Grab your, uh, grab your uh, B patcher and just drag this down. There it is. Actually, uh, do it on all of them. Grab all four of your B patchers and drag them all at the same time. There we go. So change this this blend. Even though the list says add, we have it. That's it's by default. It's it's alpha blend. We should actually make that um, be the default thing that gets selected. So that way you know that it's the default is alpha blend, and that's the one that it's on. Let's go back into that patch and fix that. Uh, movie player GL reopen that patch, and uh, not movie player GL. Sorry, movie valves. Uh, movie valves. There it is. Uh, this load mess one. Let's see, here's our U menu. Let's see, I'm going to put my message over here just to make things clear. Er. And this is layer. This is blend. All right, so that's a little clear. Now what I can do actually is figure out, make sure that if you if you typed yours in the same order as mine, then the zero, one, two, three, four, five, alpha blend will be number five, the first item being zero. So if I just take this load mess one, I could make another load mess five and send it into that, or I could just trigger a five to change that one to a five. Now when that starts, it'll automatically choose alpha blend out of this list, which is what the default is on that, uh, on the movie players anyway, is alpha blend. So save that. And now you see all of your U menus down here are on uh, alpha blend which is what the default is anyway. So this is blading, underneath that is B, B ball. Then I have countdown and then dishes. And my B ball it looks like it's layer one right now. But if I can change blading to be layer one by doing that, maybe. Okay. Did I break my layer functionality? Where's blading? There it is. All right. So this, if I want this to be on top, I can say this is layer four and it should be on top. Yeah, it is. Okay, great. So that's working the way it should. And alpha blend works, but you'll notice Go ahead and try, uh, put every put all of your faders up and go ahead and change the blend to something like multiply. That gives you some different blend modes that are kind of cool. And most of these blend modes don't take um, changing the color of the thing, or changing the um, opacity doesn't really affect it. As When I'm on screen, it doesn't care that I'm changing the opacity for that. It only cares if I'm on alpha blend or alpha add. Uh, so, but you'll notice that if I'm on add, it doesn't work. Like it's giving me an additive blend between this the the top layer and the next layer below it, but the fader is not working to control that blend. That's because on addition, it's a different way that it. Um, it's a different way that the color message to the video plane affects that. So in opacity blending, you're taking the last color value and you're which is the which is the alpha channel 
and you're fading that up and down. You're taking that alpha channel and bringing it up to full or taking it down to zero and then it's transparent, right? If you're doing additive blending though, you need, you're adding all of the pixels in all of the channels. So if you wanna be able to make a, a ratio of how much is in one, you need to turn down all of those channels and turn them all up. And actually the alpha channel will stay opaque the entire time and you'll just be um, changing the RGB values up and down. So that's what we need to have a secondary blend uh, mixing message uh, just for add mode. So go back into the movie player GL file, movie player GL. And so here's the way we're doing our mixing right here on this color message. We're using we're sending one, 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 so the, the, the color of the video plane is white. And then we're, we're adjusting the uh, opacity. But what we need to do for add is do the opposite, which is duplicate this color message. And instead of it being one, 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 dollar one, instead it's dollar one, dollar one, dollar one one period so now it's these three numbers that are getting replaced by this and the one on the end is staying the same so we need to have a switch that that will decide which one of these messages we're going to send to the video plane based on what what um, blend we chose right so let's add that switch first of all switch Switch works just like a gate, but is instead of having one input going to multiple outputs, it can be multiple inputs going to a single output. We're going to have this be a switch with two inlets, but we want the first one to be open by default, which is, so we say switch to one. That way this alpha blend input will be open by default, currently open. So take the color, this color message, which is the alpha blend color message, and send that to the middle inlet on this, right? Because that's the input one. This is what controls the switch, and that's inlet, that's input two. Then send that out. So that should, that would work um, for that mode. We just need to now add the selecting and, let's see, what did I do? Okay, so then... We're going to have, okay, cell add. So what we can do now is coming out of this route, we have blend is one of these options. Uh, that's volume. So hover over them until you find the one that says hash one underscore blend. That's going to be where the blend messages will be coming in. So that's, looks like that one. Yeah. And we need to add a cell add. So we're going to, we're selecting for the word add. So make sure you are going from the, the one that's, that says hash one blend to cell add. So when, if it, if it happens to be an add message, it, this will send a bang that we can use to trigger, uh, let me check my order, trigger bang two, TB2. So the first thing that's going to happen is it switches the switch to the appropriate um, outlet. The, the next thing that happens is it will resend that um, message through the switch. So take the color, hash one, hash one, hash one, not hash one, sorry, dollar one, dollar one, dollar one, one. Take that message and put it through the second inlet on this uh, switch. See how that is? Okay. Then 
Oh, and we should also have this. So right here, the first outlet of this route that where it says matches hash one molt, that should be going into both of these color messages. So they're all they're they're both constantly changing if someone changes the slider, but the video plane is only going to be listening to the to the appropriate one for whatever mode that you happen to be in. Okay, so for the other outlet of this cell, which would be anything other than add would come out of this secondary outlet, we can have a trigger bang one. and uh, take the one and send that to the switch. There we go, that's, that's more clear. And uh, take the bang and send it to that color message to send the color message again one more time, just in case it missed it. That's confusing. I gotta fix that line. Shay's laughing because like only that. That's the only thing that's confusing. <laughs> ah, that didn't help. All right, this one. I'm gonna try. Nope, that didn't work. This. I'll try one of those. There we go. Ugly. Okay, so that should now change that color message for add. So save this. You'll have to go back in and select movies again, but that's all you'll have to do. B ball, blading, countdown, and dishes. All right, if I change my blend to add, now I can actually additively mix and add that into the channel and it actually listens to me. Down here I want to change my other ones all to add. And now you should get an additive mix of every channel. Right? When you do additive mixes, the more you're adding, the brighter everything gets because you're just adding pixels on top of pixels until it ends up being white. But that's working now the way it should. And when this mode, layers don't matter. Right? Because you're just adding the pixels of below it. Layers would matter if some of your if some of your layers were on add and some of them were on alpha blend, then layering would matter. Right, so we still want to have access to layering on all the channels. Great, so that's that's cool. Uh, let's see, what's next? It's two o'clock. We got enough time to do some stuff. We got the additive blending. All right, might as well stop here and look at shaders and slabs because uh, that's the next thing we're going to do in this. We're going to start looking at shaders, which are video effects and slabs, which are ways of holding shaders and passing video through them. So save this 13.1 MVC controller and close it and let's make a new file, new patcher. And let's start with a jit.world. Uh, and then let's call it my universe that gives you uh, on max six I would say the quickest way for you to get all of this stuff is just to go to jit gl dot render open the help file and steal uh, the window steal all this stuff right here. You don't need the draw to. This is max six, yeah. For max seven, you get all of this built in. Steal this stuff. Question. 
Max 6 over here. But you'd want to change all this stuff that says win CTX, change that to my universe. That way you're on the same page as us. You don't need this grid shape. Getting rid of that. Yes? So, uh, I know that you can encapsulate stuff right here by the subpack. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to save that subpack as a name that we can call it forever? Um, for instance, this full screen thing that we use all the time, instead of having to find it and copy and paste it, is there a way to just turn it into a subpack where all we do is link it? Yeah, it's here under snippets. So you can grab a piece of code that you like and drag it into the snippets and then you can grab it out of that whenever you want. It's just too much of a pain for me to do because we would all have to set up the same snippets. Uh, so that's why I haven't been doing it. But yeah, you can use it in the snippets. Also, if you are not using encapsulate, if you're saving as an external, then you can always load that external. You know, and and if you're ex and if you saved that in a file that Max knows about in a directory that Max knows about, one at like the Max Seven directory, then your externals will actually pop up like Movie Player GL. If I start typing Movie Player GL, it says, "Oh, you want to do Movie Movie Player GL?" And there you go, Movie Player GL. And also doing, I always encourage doing externals rather than encapsulating into a sub patch because if you're using that encapsulation more than one time and you make a change to it, you'll have to change every single time, every single one of those instantiations. Whereas if you do an external, you make a change, you save it, every place it's instantiated automatically gets updated. Right? Okay. So, yeah, max six over here. Uh, but change where it says win CX, win CTX to my universe. You'll also need a JIT uh, GL video plane on Mac 6. I'm still going to call it win CTX for now so that it's not conflicting with my other stuff. All right. So Mac 6 or Mac 7 with the JIT.world. That gives you all of this built in. It gives you a renderer, a video plane, and a window. When you turn it on, you get this 50% gray because that's what the default um, erase color is, which I think actually I came up with a hypothesis on why that's the default color. And it's not only, I thought, well, maybe it's just to remind you that, that it doesn't have to be black that it can be whatever color you want. But I think it is actually this 50% gray because when you do opacity or, or additive blending for that matter, if you're mixing between one channel, there's a point where, where if one channel is going up and the other channel is going down, at the middle there, the overall brightness actually dips down. You get the same thing in audio when you're crossfading between one channel and another channel. The, that, that point of cross the overall energy dips down. So if you made the erase color slightly brighter than black, you can kind of compensate for that overall dip in light and it won't look like there's a dip in light. Uh, yeah. But if things become completely transparent, you're seeing gray and not black. So there's that. What, let me see, what was my point on that? I don't know what my point is, but the next thing we want to do is make a jit.movie in the same uh, thing. Uh, so jit.movie, if you're on mix, sit max 6, it's going to be a jit.qt.movie at output texture 1. If you're in max 6, you won't be able to do that. You'll have to put it through a jit.gl.texture object. Uh, and actually, don't even bother putting it through a JITGL texture because you can actually just patch it to the next object, which will do this for you automatically. And that's the JITGL.slab. This is the same for all of us, JITGL slab. This will take either a, either a texture or a matrix in it, but it's only going to output a texture. It will not output a matrix. Because it, it puts it into OpenGL universe where you're we're dealing with shaders. Uh, and so then the next thing we want to do is 
GeoSlab. We want to make sure that that has the same universe name as the world. My universe. Okay. And uh, then we're going to pass that. Well, eventually we're going to pass it through three different slabs and then into a text final. And then text final goes into where? Video playing. Well, I didn't, I didn't put that in my notes. Let's just send that to a window. All right. Uh, for now, let's send this right into the video plane that's built into the jit.world my universe. And uh, let's read a movie. Actually, just grab a movie. Uh, I think. What is it? Oh, movies, videos. Just grab something from your list over here. Anything. And send that into. Oh, all right. I don't even need the JIT movie player. That's right. This is a Mac 7 thing, though. All right, there we go. That works. Okay, so it's going through the slab and then it goes into the jit.world. So that so far that's working other than we haven't we're not we haven't loaded anything into the slab yet. So we don't have um, we need to we actually need to load a shader in there. So we can Question. Yeah. Since we called jit.dl.slab my universe, why do we say you're not actually linking it to my universe. You're actually linking it to the JITGL video plane that's built into the JIT world my universe. Okay. So I could do it once. Actually, once I make that connection, that association has been made to that that uh, thing, and I can actually delete the connection, right. and it's no, still no, there. No, but as soon as I reopen okay. it, it won't know that. But yeah, you could go to a JITGL video plane my universe. And attach it to that, and then you're not attached to that JIT world, right? Okay. So we can read a shader file into this GL slab by hitting the read and then going to media, jitter shaders and picking a shader that would take forever there's a great collection of shaders already made if you do u menu and open up the inspector for the u menu uh, and go down to auto populate and uh, collection name and choose shaders and it'll give you this huge list of shaders that are built into Max. And so then we can take this and just pass it through a read message like that. Make sure you're using the middle outlet of the U menu. All right, so some of these shaders are binary shaders and some of them are unary shaders. And what that means is some of them are compositing shaders that want two textures coming in and like to deciding how you're gonna composite those two images. Some of them are just like video effects, like kaleidoscope and whatever, and they don't want a second texture, they just want the one texture. So the way this, has, this comes with two inlets, uh, the slab, and sometimes this a uh, second inlet is for the other texture. Sometimes it doesn't do anything. Depends on what you have loaded. Uh, but for now, let's load a unary texture or uh, shader just to see how this works. I think Kaleidoscope is a great one to look at. TD.Kaleido. And it gives you this nice Kaleidoscope effect. But it looks kind of funky. It's, this edge looks weird. It doesn't, I, I would like, and I don't like how many divisions. It's not enough. I want to, I want to change this. I want to change the parameters of this uh, effect. That's fine. You just have to get those parameters. And the parameters are different for every single shader. So there's no way of you pre-programming the, pr the parameters into a, a list if you're ever planning on switching to a different shader, 
right? So we're going to have to build a dynamic system that will give us a list of parameters based on whatever thing that we've chosen. Let's start with just the base message, which is get param list. Sending that to the JITGL slab, if it has a shader loaded, will send those parameters out the dump outlet right here. Dump out. Hitting, it'll say, oh, here's the param, the param list for this. Param list. Scale, offset, origin, div, and text zero. Okay. So we can use that. Uh, Prepend slab list. Where did that go? Uh, yeah, these notes are terrible. We can use this to uh, create a list, a drop down list of effects. Let me think. Let me think. Okay. Well, for now, let's just look at these. So that's our param list. We can now say message, make a message and say div dollar one. And send a integer through that. And we can change the number of divisions that way. Oh, wait, it didn't work. Why? Go to open my Max window, look for errors. Does not understand div. That's because, yes, it wouldn't, because it doesn't know, it's not going to know, the GL slab object doesn't know all of the parameters of every shader that you might happen to load into it, right? So what you have to tell it is that this div is actually a param, or a parameter for the shader that it is loaded. So I want to actually say param div dollar one now if I change this say I want five four divisions there we go now I can change this parameters and some of these as you can see there's some of them that divide really nicely and look good on the video and some of them have that weird edge ten looks cool all right, and now let's uh, make some other ones. Message, param, uh, what is that? Offset scale, scale, dollar one. Let's do a float on that one. Send that into the slab, and we can change the scale of this. Oh, and so if you can make it repeat more than one time by, by putting the scale above one. Cool. And you could all go ahead and, you know. So if you were always going to load the kaleidoscope shader into this, you could actually, in this slab, my universe, whoop, whoops, uh, you can say at shader no at file at file and then the name that you chose td dot kaleido dot jxs and then it will and you could just hard code these parameters for that thing and just have those as part of your patch and that would work fine uh, but we, like I said, we're going to make a, a uh, dynamic system if I can find it, my, if I can find my notes, but we might actually run out of time before we get there anyway, so I won't worry about it so much now. But one thing I did want to show you now is I want to make a second slab, and we are going to pass this through two levels of shaders. Uh, and we can look how the order of which you're applying effects um, affects um, changes the way things look and, and how the order of effects really matters, right? So we have this kaleidoscope. I'm going to put it back to 10 divisions. All right, so duplicate this slab 
And uh, let's uh, duplicate the method of reading files into it, the U menu and read. Pass this through the slab, the second slab, and then into the video plane. And change this one to something else like tiles. So tiles, all that does is it generates tiles based on the pixels that it's getting in, but it completely obscures the video, right? Uh, so you can see that the order of things really matter here. Like if I'm if I wanted to this to be tiles, but to be in a kaleidoscope. I have tiles in Kaleidoscope loaded right now, but I don't see any Kaleidoscope. But what I could do is put tiles first over here. Uh, and then on this one, have this one be Kaleidoscope, and now I have a Kaleidoscope of tiles. Right? Let me show you a different example. Fisheye. So if I wanted this to be fisheye distorted first and then kaleidoscoped, that would be, this is how that would look. But if I change this back, if I did it the other way, this is kaleidoed first and then it's fisheyed. Actually, I guess that's a bad example. They look kind of the same. <laughs> uh, cartipole. <laughs> you, there's there's some of these where the le where the order doesn't matter as much as some other ones, but you can definitely see where, like twirl for example, if I'm kaleidoscoping first and then twirling, it's going to look a lot different than if I twirl first and then kaleidoscope. Then you promenade. <laughs> Did you do do square dancing in, in high school? Contra dance. Yeah. yeah, they didn't. They made us do square dancing. I did do contra dancing yeah. though, too. Uh, okay, so that's cool. It's two thirty. Let me check my notes. What do I want to do with this next? Yeah, I know. Well, I'm trying to figure out what the hell that was. Oh, wait. Here it is. Okay, I got it. I got it. It's in my notes. I just didn't see it. It's over here on this, this side. That's why I didn't see it. Okay. Uh, great. So, <laughs> all right. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. It's not worth it. <laughs> It'll be worth it when you have when you're able to change shaders and be able to change effects on that on that mixer, which you won't be able to do if you don't have this system. All right, so what we're gonna do is coming out of this, we're sending the list from this to a thing called slab list. Slab list. So we're gonna send send slab list. Okay. Then we're gonna re then we're gonna receive that slab list over here. Receive slab list. And uh, oh, I had some routing in there. Where do we add that routing? Oh, I see. Okay, we prepended. So in order for this to go to the right place and to the because we're gonna have multiple shaders, we're gonna have three levels of shaderage. <laughs> three slabs, I guess I should say. Uh, we want to have this slab list be able to send and receive these and deal with them independently. So we're going to prepend a one on this first level, like that. So this will now, when it gets that list, it's going to say one param list and then all of the parameters. Right? We're receiving that over here where we're going to route for that one. We're also going to route for two and three for the third level of shaders, third level of slabs. All right, so coming into the slab list to the route one, two, three. So when it comes out this, it'll come out. If this slab 
if we're pulling the uh, param list, it's gonna it's gonna come out the one outlet here. And then what we're gonna do? What are we gonna do? We are going to trigger. Oh my god, uh, that's a gate positioner. Okay, uh, first we're gonna take a trigger list and clear coming out of that one. And that's going to first the first thing that that will output is a list is a clear message, which will clear any of the param list that was in the U menu from the last time we got a param list. Make a U menu object. U menu. We're sending this clear output order one clear, sending that to the U menu. That way it clears whatever happens to be in the U menu before. Then the second thing it does is it will have a list of all the different param parameters, but we can't add we can't add um, things to items to the U menu in that way. We have to add them one one item at a time. So we need to take that list and iterate through each item in the list. And the object that does that is called iter. It iterates a list. And uh, then we're going to, in order to add items to the U menu, it wants the word append and then the item that you're going to add. So we're going to prepend. Whoops. Prepend. Append. So. We're prepending the word append to this list and iterating through the list one at a time, and that should add those items to the slab list. So go ahead. And prepend append gives you when you iterate through the list, it will give you it will say append and then that item in the list. Okay. So click on get param list over here, and you should now get a list of um, items from this from this uh, shader, which is twirl is the one that I had loaded. I'm going to load Kaleido again. And if I say get param list, now I get a param list that said the first item is the word param list. That's not very useful for us. We should actually get rid of that. Then scale offset, or origin, division, and text zero. So we can actually get rid of the word param list because that's not helpful for us. And we can do that simply by um, routing out the word param list. Route param list. And so then anything with param list will come out this way. Is that going to work? I think that'll work. It might be, yeah. And then it, th that will actually get rid of the word param list. And I believe param list, no, it's going to iterate through them one at a time. So yeah, we want the second outlet of this. So then we, that way it will send the word out uh, param list out here, which will go nowhere and we won't use it. And everything else will get prepend append will get sent to the prepend append, and that should get word, rid of the word param list from that list. Let's try that again. So I get param list, and now over here, wait, did that not work? Get param, oh, I just didn't, I wasn't locked. Yeah, now, my, now I just have scale offset origin in text zero. So that was a way of, we call that routing out where you're using a route to just get rid of a, a word and a list, but and not actually routing based on that list, that word. Uh, okay, so there's your dynamic list. We just now need to put this into action, and we to put this into action, we need to make sure that this that this parameter gets sent to the correct place. And uh, that was the reason why we did this route one, two, three. And so we can send these to a something like a radio button. A radio, is it radio group? Yeah, radio group. With a, go into 
this isn't the only way. You could probably do this with a number box too. But this was a nice um, graphical way of representing this. Uh, so number of items here, size on this, change that to three. So now you get three buttons. And this will output a zero, one, and two. It'll also display a zero, one, or a two. And whichever one gets input will close the other one. So we can send it now message zero. And you can see that that selects that first button in that radio group. Message one would, would select the second one. And message two would select the third one. Radio group. And then go into the inspector and change the items to three. All right, so we got this. We're going to take this. So if it outputs one, we're going to have that trigger this message. Um, outputs two is going to trigger this one, and output three is going to trigger this one. And uh, let's see. Let me just test that. So I'm on two right now, and if I hit get param list, then it should switch to one. And it does. And if this, if I was, if this say was now two, don't do this, guys. I'm just testing. If the, that's two, I go that, and it switches to two. Okay, great. That's working. All right. And then, so now this is needs to, because it's sending a zero, one, or a two, and the gate that we're going to use, gate three, and the default one that opens is one. This gate wants, doesn't want zero, one, and two. It wants one, two, and three. So what do we do? We just add one to it, right? Plus one. There's that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this actually, this whole, I'm just realizing now, this radio group is just a graphical thing. You wouldn't even really need it at all. Uh, you could just attach these, 0, 1, and 2. You could change them to 1, 2, and 3 and attach them directly to the gate, and it would work the same way. But it's nice to see where it's going, and that way you know what position this gate is on, right, by looking at this radio button. All right, so we have this gate, and now we just need to, uh, let's see. Prepend, append, then we're going to have the param list coming out of this, and we choose. So to actually communicate with the uh, shader, we needed to me remember we needed to have the word param, right? Param, and then the, the parameter, and then the value. So here we don't have the word param, we just have the parameters, so we need to have the word param beforehand, so we need to prepend param. So prepending param, we're going to have that go into a message, an empty message, the right inlet on that message. So now if I select this, it says param offset. Um, we also need, but we also need dollar sign one to make this a message that we can actually use. So we need to also prepend dollar sign one to this. like that. Now go ahead and choose something from that and you can see it makes this. But it's uh, the dollar sign one is on the wrong side because I didn't mean prepend, I actually meant append. So sorry, change that to append dollar sign one. And now I choose scale and I get param scale dollar sign one which is the correctly formatted message 
we then send this correctly formatted message out the gate inlet and it goes to one of three param levels send params underscore one so that would be for the layer one parameter underscore two would be for the layer two parameters and underscore three for the layer three parameters we're gonna have three level three layers of video effects that you can apply all right then we just need a float attached to this message to actually do something with this. So this is our dynamic parameter list generating controller thing. Uh, let's take a look. In order to actually, we, we still need to receive these sends. That's the only thing. So over here, let me check my picture. Over here, I should be receiving. I'm not. Oh yeah, I am right there. Receive params underscore one. So yeah, have a receive. Uh, actually, just to duplicate all these sends that you just made and change them to receives. Okay, so this one will go to the third slab. Let's duplicate this. I'm gonna actually take out the at file Kaleido stuff because I don't want to fool myself um, thinking that there's a kaleidoscope shader loaded when I loaded something subsequently different. All right, so we have two slabs. I'm going to now pass this through a third slab and into the video plane. All right, so params one. Now I don't need these uh, anymore. I do need the get param list, but I don't need these. Receive param one. Receive params two, receive params three. Don't need these anymore. We have them already over there, right? Oh, keep one of them. We're gonna still want it. All right, let me check my picture actually. That's param list, no, right. Okay, no, you do want to keep them. So keep this uh, read and these shader files. Actually, make a third one for the third layer level. Like that. All right. So... I'm going to turn uh, Hold on. This is a little funky. I don't know how that got all pulled around. Twist it around like that. There. Is that better? Great. So if I hit get param list on level one, uh, here, actually get add the get param list on each level.
All right. So if I say get param list on level one, it should create this list for that parameter, those, that param list. It should also route this to the correct place, but it didn't look like it did. Um, get param list. Let me try that one more time. I thought I tested that and it was working, but it doesn't seem to work now. I think I know why. I think it's because it's not, these need to go to a bang. Prepend one. Oh, wait. Oh, right. Okay, so I think also on this route, you want to send all three of these to the same trigger clear. Let me check my picture on that. Yes. So that was one thing that was up with that. So all three coming out of this route needs to go to this trigger, but each one needs to go to these as well. Let me try see if that fixes it. No, didn't fix it. Let me see. Get param list. It might also be because I didn't have a shader loaded. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think because it didn't have any shader in it. So when I was saying get param list, nothing was coming out, so nothing was happening. So make sure you choose a shader out of the list. And then even if I'm on a different thing over here, if I say get param list, it goes back and works the way it should. Great, cool. So that was what the error was there. I didn't have a shader loaded. All right, so when you say get param list, and here, actually, this is getting, this is getting tedious having to scroll back and forth. Let's just make a quick presentation mode on this. So let's add the get par the param lists to the presentation mode, shift command P. Uh, we want to also add this little graphical thing that we've created and this offset, this U menu, the float here, and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, add those to presentation mode as well. Now in presentation mode, I can grab all of this stuff. This is level one level two level three and this is where the messages are going this is what the message is and this is how much of that parameter. This is what the parameter is, and this is how much of that parameter. All right, so get param list, get param list. I don't think I had something loaded. In. So make sure you've loaded a, three different shaders in all three different levels. I'm gonna do Kaleido on the top. This middle one, I'm going to do, um, Stick to the TD ones because most of those aren't, aren't bind, they're all unary. Uh, Fisheye and this last one I'm going to do. Uh, mirror. So get param, let's get param, let's. Oh, no, I was right. It doesn't seem to work right. Okay. All right. Basically out of time. Uh, but you can see, at least for this one level, uh, 
you have this thing that that pops up and now you can change that parameter and we'll we'll, we'll look at it, this again next week next week is our last class I believe before our final so if you haven't emailed me your final make sure you're doing that today and I'll get back to you today uh, let me just triple check what's going on yeah so today is the 13th class next next week is the last class so next week we'll finish up the four channel mixer uh, hopefully that'll only take half of the class. I think I'm just gonna not do this networking DMX MIDI and OSC because I just don't have time. Uh, if you guys are interested in that in your project, let me know and I can I can give you time on that. Because what I'm gonna do is I will spend half the class finishing up the four channel mixer, and the rest of the class I want you guys to work on your final in class so that I'm here to help you with whatever projects your problems you're having. So your homework is to make sure that you have something done on your final for next week. All right? Do something on your final. Have it halfway done. Have it all the way done if you can. And uh, then I will then we'll work on that and workshop it in class. And then we're going to meet the following Wednesday during class hours. Everybody said that works for them. Yes? Great. And that will be just a short thing, probably for about an hour. Everybody uh, shows their final. You have to give a five-minute presentation that explains uh, what you did and how it works, what problems you had, and how you overcame them. Uh, just wanted to stress for everybody, it's fine to use code that you find on the Internet. Um, but if you're going to use code that you find on the Internet, Please make sure that you are ripping it apart and knowing how it works to the point that you could make it from scratch yourself again. All right? I don't want anybody turning in a final with this section of code that they don't know how it works or their patch just doesn't work because the code that they got from the Internet isn't doing what they thought it was doing. Right? So, yeah. Number one, make sure your patch works. I don't, I don't want to come in and on, uh, on that day and have something that doesn't work. So if it doesn't work and you're banging your head against the wall, make time with me and I'll help you fix it. There's probably just one little thing somewhere that you messed up. Two, if you're using code from the Internet, you better know how it works. All right, great. See you next week. Have something started on your final. <laughs>